Have you ever picked up an iPhone or an iPad ready to use it only to slam into that locks to owner screen? It feels like hitting a brick wall, right? Well, in this explainer, we're gonna break down exactly what that lock is, and more importantly, what the experts say you can actually do about it. Okay, so here's our game plan. First, we'll get into what this lock even is. Then, we'll check out an instant online solution, followed by Apple's own official methods. We'll also cover the safe way to buy a used device so this never happens again. And finally, we'll look at the stuff you absolutely have to avoid. All right, first things first. Before you can fix a problem, you've got to understand it. So let's dig into the nuts and bolts of why this lock is so ridiculously effective. Ah, this screen. If you've seen it, you know that sinking feeling of holding a perfectly good device that's basically a paperweight. It's Apple's ultimate anti-theft tool, but sometimes it locks out the wrong people. The good news? You're not totally stuck. So here's the crucial thing to get your head around. The lock isn't actually on your phone. It's not on a chip inside the device. It's basically a flag on Apple's main servers, tying your phone's unique serial number directly to an Apple ID. And that little detail changes everything. Right, and because it's on Apple's servers, you can't just factory reset it or wipe the data to get around it. See, every single time an Apple device is turned on for the first time, it has to phone home to Apple and ask for permission to activate. If the server sees that flag is still up, it just says, nope, and that's it. The process stops dead. Okay, so now we know it's a server-side problem. So what's the fix? Well, the source material we're looking at points to an online service that's built to tackle this very issue, and it's positioned as a really good first step. The service is called LockedToOwner.com. It's described as a totally automated online tool that can legally get that activation rock removed for you. And get this, the source says it's completely free, and you don't even need to have the previous owner's information to do it. And this is where it gets really interesting. Look at this side by side. With the online method on the left, you don't need credentials, you don't need proof of purchase, and the wait time is just minutes. Now, compare that to the manual ways, where you do need those things. The proof has to be super strict, and you could be waiting for days. Okay, so besides that service, there are, of course, the official Apple-approved manual methods. So let's walk through what those look like and who they're for. Now, if you bought a device from someone and you can still contact them, this is the cleanest way, for sure. They don't have to give you their password or anything. They just need to log into their iCloud account on any web browser, find the device, and this part is critical. They have to click remove from account. Just erasing it won't do the trick. Now, what if you're the original owner, but you just forgot your account info? You can go straight to Apple, but, and this is a huge but, be ready for some serious paperwork. Apple's requirements are no joke. You need the original retail receipt from a place they approve of, and that receipt absolutely must have the device's serial number printed on it. They don't bend on that. The source also points out two other very specific situations. If the device is locked to your own account, your best bet is to go through Apple's normal account recovery process. But if it's a phone from your job or your school, don't even bother with that. You have to go to the IT department. They have special tools to release the device on their end. You know, everything we've talked about so far is about fixing the problem after it happens. So how about we talk about being proactive? If you're thinking of buying a used Apple device, this is the only way to do it safely. Seriously, this is the one and only foolproof method. You need to be there, in person, and watch the seller erase the device right in front of you. Then, you need to see it restart to that hello screen in all the different languages. If you can get through the setup from there without it ever asking for the old Apple ID, you're golden. And finally, we have to talk about the sketchy side of all this. There is a whole online industry built around this one problem, and frankly, it is loaded with risks and straight-up scams. Okay, this might be the most important thing to understand, the massive difference between a bypass and a removal. A bypass is just a temporary software hack. It tricks the phone into skipping the activation screen. But the lock is still there on Apple's servers, and it'll probably come right back the next time you restart or update. A true removal, which is what legitimate methods do, actually takes that lock off Apple's servers for good. It's permanent. You also need to be super, super careful about any of those websites that ask for your phone's IMEI or serial number just to check its lock status. The source material warns that doing this can expose your data and can even lead to your phone's unique ID being stolen and used for fraud. And let's just put a fine point on this, because the source material could not be more direct. 
If an online service is asking you to pay money to unlock your device, it is almost certainly a scam. The real legitimate methods are either free or they're handled directly by Apple when you have the right documents. So what's the big takeaway here? That lock to owner screen is a really tough nut to crack, but you're not out of options. There are clear, legitimate ways to solve it. But you know, this whole thing makes you think about the future, doesn't it? As our devices get smarter and smarter about locking out thieves, is the next big challenge gonna be proving to our own tech that we're the ones who are supposed to be there?